All right, here we have a block on block problem. So I have a two kilogram block on the top, five kilograms underneath, 80 Newton force pulling to the right on that bottom block. And then I have a coefficient of kinetic friction between block B and the floor as 0 0.22. So I'm gonna to try to write that in. Kind of like, like to write it like that. So I have UK equals 0 0.22 and then part A says assuming block A doesn't slip compute the acceleration of the system so I hope that you can visualize what would happen if you just if you pulled on B too hard it could just slide out from under block A so that's why I had to say this it's like the magic trick of pulling out the tablecloth from underneath all the all the dishes if you pull hard enough it should be able to slip and we're going to get into sort of analyzing some of the details of that phenomenon in part B. So assuming block A doesn't slip, compute the acceleration of the system. Okay, so this is kind of the, the easy part of the problem. And let's see, I want to go to that. I'm just going to do a new picture. And what this part allows me to do, assuming block A doesn't slip, that allows me to treat the entire 7 kilograms as a single mass. That force is accelerating seven kilograms of mass. So this is legal as long as there's no slipping happening, different motions for A and B. So this is just going to be seven. And I have a force. I have 80 newtons on the seven kilogram mass. And there's some kinetic friction opposing that. given by mu k times the normal force. I have gravity pulling down. mg is going to be 7 times 9.8. I'll just go ahead and throw the numbers in right here. I need 68.6 .6 for the weight. There are no forces tampering with the vertical direction. Nothing pulling up or or anything extra pushing down on this. So the normal force is going to be equal to mg, 68.6 .6 newtons. And I'll go ahead and just write off to the side here that fk is mu k times the normal force. So that's 0.22 times 68.6. That's 15.1 Newtons. Now I'm ready to use Newton's second law. F net equals MA. So positive direction, I have 80 Newtons applied. Negative direction, that was the friction force, 15.1. That's equal to 7 times the acceleration. And I can solve quickly for A, 80 minus 15.1. Divide that result by 7, and A is 9.27 meters per second squared. Okay, part B is where it gets a little more challenging. So compute the minimum coefficient of static friction between block A and block B. So now I'm talking about this interface All right there's got to be some static friction there otherwise a would slip and part this this sort of behavior in part a wouldn't be possible um, so the minimum static friction coefficient to guarantee that block a won't slip so we want to have static friction that is just barely hanging on it's about to break loose so this puts me again in the case of a breaking loose phenomenon and I can assume the static friction force is maxed out. I'm going to give it the weakest possible coefficient of static friction to make it so that in this scenario it's maxed out. So maybe I'll go up here and just mess with the diagram a little bit. I want to analyze what's going on on A. And I don't really want yellow there. So I have gravity pulling down on A. I have a 
normal force that's B exerting that normal force on A, pushing up. And I observe an acceleration to the right that I've already computed. It was 9.27 meters per second squared. And I have to ask myself, what force is causing that acceleration? And it has to be B pulling it along parallel with that static friction force. All right, so one interesting thing about this problem is that it results in a static friction force pointing in the direction of motion. It's still opposing the direction that slipping would occur. So if A started slipping, it would end up going back this way, sliding that way across B. And the static friction force is preventing that from occurring. All right, so it looks like the normal force isn't so hard to get. Um, this is just another case where there's nothing tampering with the vertical direction. So N is equal to mg. That's 2 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared, so 19.6 newtons. And then I'm going to assume that my static friction force is maxed out, which means we barely have a good enough friction coefficient to keep this thing stuck. That's why it's the minimum. So Fs max. OK, and I have the normal force. And I'm trying to find the static friction coefficient. So if something that's missing here is that static friction force. I've got to figure it out. And that will come from Newton's second law analysis on this three kilo, two kilogram block. Um, the, the only force on it pointing to the right is F, Fs. The mass is two kilograms. The acceleration is 9.27 meters per second squared, calculated in part A. And so I figured out how big the friction force has to be. 18.54 newtons. And then I'm going to plug that back in over here. I know my normal force, so it should be able to get the friction coefficient. So 18.54 for the friction force that's accelerating this object is my coefficient times n, which was 19.6. It actually takes a rather large coefficient to keep it stuck but it is a pretty big acceleration. I get 0.95-ish for that. 